First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Jakub uh, uh, who invited me to, to speak about Stand for Life uh, uh, achievement in Egypt. Uh, actually, also, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Wael Abdelayel and Ahmed Gendi for their uh, uh, wonderful conference. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing starting from uh, epidemiology, pathophysiology, and then uh, now in real life, Stand for Life. Uh, my co chairman is Professor Carly De Mari. Uh, Made me, uh, made my life easy because I usually take his advice for Center for Life when it started two years ago. Uh, this is an Egyptian journey in primary PCI. In 2006, we have a lot of workshops, we have a lot of discussion, we have a lot of cases. In 2007, we started to share in international track, actually. And this is the review article of my, uh, uh, the president of Egyptian Society of Cardiology that cardiology in Egypt is improving through increased links with Europe and USI. Now we start 2007 in the acute chronic syndrome. I started said yesterday, access registry, and this is in, uh, in the clinical trial uh, uh, in Sweden, in European Heart uh, uh, Society, European Society of Cardiology. And these are the results of the access for uh, the, these participating countries to 12,000 patients included worldwide. It, acute chronic syndrome in Egypt, so okay, at younger age, to follow the international practice guidelines, reperfusion therapy is about 60%, but only 6 to 8% primary PCI. So a national project is mandated for patients and physician awareness, emergency awareness, cat lab availability 24-7, collaboration between Ministry of Health, Health Insurance, and Social Pairs. So 2010, we decided to find a way. And this is our way. Uh, actually, in... in, in um, in the European Society of Cardiology, uh, the Congress in Stockholm, we declared the Stand for Life, Egypt to be part of the Stand for Life, and this is a signature of Professor de Carlo Di Mari as well here, the signature, Peter Udinisky, Jean Vajadi, and William Wigeon. So we find the, our, our, our way. This started the 25th of November in 2010. This is uh, uh, actually uh, two months before revolution. And this is the first uh, meeting for steering committee. We start for task force committee. We started the project's objectives, then the project's outlines, and then meeting by region, including member allocate from steering and task force committee. Then we studied and we discussed about the current situation in Egypt, then determine each region tasks, and then they decide on the key stakeholders, select pilot center and develop into what's known as center of excellency, and then brainstorming for detailed plan and gather baseline data. So we divide ourselves into eight groups of works, and then we found the current situation, the patient pathway. We found problem in the platform here, the patients, that a patient usually calls cardiologists or call private hospitals, call physicians from private insurance, call EMS or denial. These are the obstacles, this is not one way track. The EMS, only ambulance from specialized cardiac hospitals have a physician on board. It's not properly trained. ECG only on board in new ambulance. It's no clear unified protocols. And the, will drive, the ambulance will drive the patient to nearest hospitals if private insurance will go to private hospitals. So these are the main obstacles of the EMS. Then the cath lab facilities, not all open. All the caths in Egypt are open 24-7. Lack of awareness of how to treat AMI patients. Cat lab not prepared for AMI patients. These logistic obstacles. And then after that, whether I transfer the patient to home, to ICU, or to local house. So we found our way. Then we have to start the collect. This is the project. We have to collect data in order to have the plan, the action plan of this. How many cat labs in Egypt? Actually, in 2011, we can, the sorry, Egyptian population is 75, actually now approaching 2013 to 18, five, eight, eight, 85 millions. So 15 millions here, actually number in, in three years. Number of cat labs started by 84 cat labs, now approaching 124 cat labs. The number of cat labs working 24 sevens in 2011, about six, now can reach, we can reach up to 60, 2013, our plan. SFL or Center for Life pilot centers, starting with six centers, now we're reaching to be 22 in, to at the end of 
2012 and then 12, 12, 2013 to be 40. And this is the main, um, this Dr. Magdi asked me how to, uh, uh, how to estimate. This is actually, I learned a lot from the project because in order to have a project, you should have a project manager. And thanks to Ahmed Shell, the project manager, I'm a champion speaker, but you should have a project manager. In order to have the project for the main achievement, you should have a statistics. And this is the population in Egypt. Actually, in the, in the main here in the, the upper Egypt is 20%, where Aswan Center is there. Actually, 21 in the Delta. Cairo is only 12%. Alexandria is 6, Giza is, uh, is 10. So Cairo and Giza is 22, which equal to upper Egypt or more, and to Delta. This is the number of cat labs. This is number 24-7, and this is SFL pilots. And how the population per cat labs, actually the astonishing, we can find that the population SFL pilots is 1,600,000, which could be, it should be 9,000. Uh, uh, 9,072. And here from Cairo, it is the population service, one cat lab, 1,400,000 should be what, 800. So it's the discrepancy between what could be for the cat lab and what is the cat lab service. So we have a shortage of the cat lab, in spite of the fact we know that these cat labs are, are many, but they are not many because they're not prepared for, for, doing, uh, for doing primary PCR. So then we made a, a committee, it's called committee for a, a cho choosing which center is liable, liable for primary PCR. So we searched for European and American, we discussed that we found this is what Douglas Weaver, which is the past president of the American College of Cardiology, that all hospitals are not equal for treatment of the, the acute myocardial infarction, and this is, did not change since published circulation in 2003, how many cases be done by the operators, how many operators per, per cath lab, how many technicians, whether it's a primary or tertiary hospitals. And this committee was found five doctors, and they choose the uh, centers which are ready for 24-7. We go to make what's known as external auditings. For this, we found that only six, four in Cairo, one in Zagazig, one in Alexandria. This started as phase one for pilot center. These centers shared in the first phase registry. So we divide the activities to be worked in, the, in these two years. From 2000, I said that it start 2010, November. So activities start 2011, 2012. What about five, six items in the activities? Physician education, patient educations, EMS staff and problems, Egyptian registry, and pilot center detection. We finally, we, we started the phase phase registry and according to the advice of Professor uh, Di Mario for the first phase registry, we took your advice and we finished the second phase of Egyptian stand for life registry at the end of this month, uh, January 2013, achieving about 2,500 patients. And this is the website, stand for life in Egypt, standforlifeegypt.com. And we have an event calendars, we have application for the center to join a stand for live, and then we took the criteria and the username and passwords. And this is for the all item identification site, cat lab, and coronary intervention. Actually, in Egypt, uh, uh, this is a, a slide by, by Professor De Mario and Peter actually started by Wodiniski in November 19, 2009. How many of uh, the centers doing primary PCI? How many? thrombolysis, how many neuroperfusions? Actually, we are here, Egypt is there. Six to eight percent primary PCI and 60 percent neuroperfusion. Actually, this is the actual number of uh, the acute access registry. So we have, we have now facts, 60 percent neuroperfusion and we have six to eight uh, percent uh, primary PCI. Now we're approaching uh, the ending of the second phase to be less of, the, of reperfusion and more of primary PCI approaching 22 percent. And this is uh, in our main achievement 2012, published in Euro Intervention with other countries. Uh, and this is the names of the big centers in the registry. State Stand for Life initiative placed at the forefront in Egypt 2011 in Euro Intervention Journal. So Egypt's Egyptian journey is going fast. Year 2012 going into details, and what we go into year 2013 is move into actions. In order to have a project, I learned a lot, I told you. This is what's known as SWAT analysis. What is the SWAT analysis? SWAT is the strengths, weakness, opportunity, threats. 
SWATs here for our, our, our projects. These are attributed to SFL Egypt initiative, which are helpful achieving objectives. What are the strengths of this SFL? It, this is the mega project. This is uh, uh, sponsored by European Society of Cardiology, EPCI, EuroPCR. So they give the strengths of this uh, project. This, this is an eminent board. Professional project management, sponsors, fundraisings, with new ideas from different doctors, QLs and other doctor, young doctors, excellent PR, international support, and primary support actually from the Ministry of Health. The weakness of this project, that this is attributable harmful in achieving a project, social status in Egypt. Actually, it's, it's very difficult to find the, the discrepancy in social status. The change of ministers, I have, I face in two years, five ministers. So I have a challenge to, so that they, all of them are enthusiastic in these projects, but actually this is weakness because you should have one at least for two years or two to three years. But fortunately, we, I have uh, uh, the approval of most of these ministers in these projects. The increase in patient awareness versus facilities level. You can make awareness, but there is no facilities for the level. So this is the weakness point. The political directed media, this should, the media directed not only to the, this project, you're directing to, to politicians, to revolutions, to everything. This is, so this is a weak point in Egypt. Delaying governmental decision making, as you see this, because of difference in the, the ministers, difference in the logistics, the difference in delaying the government decision making. There is no man of decision. Opportunities, actually high motivation level of all the doctors, all the patients, all the media. The support from some non-governmental organizations, I found it in the Rotary, I found it in the businessmen, I found it in non uh, rich people, in, uh, even in, in the lay people, they have support. So this gives you enthusiasm to do the projects. Availability and state-of-the-art project infrastructures, which is first to, done, to be done in Egypt. We don't have any project in the medical field had this SWAT analysis. Patient needs for project success. Usually the patient, you ask the patient, he needs this. They need to, su to succeed in this fish. And branding, this is stand for life, SFL. When you said in Arabic, stand for life. This is opportunity. This is branding, like any car, Mercedes, BMW, branding. Threats, these are those external factors which are out of our hands, harmful to the SFL Egypt. Competition or other similar projects in Egypt after revolution. For example, competitions actually maybe in, 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 uh, uh, in virus C. Uh, in, uh, in doing uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for buildings, or Al Ashwaiyat, you know, it's, this is similar projects in Egypt, but this competition. So we have to, 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 to concentrate on, uh, on, uh, on the media. Low resources to upgrade the EMS surface. So, what will be the solution? For the patient, most of the patients are covered from governmental health insurance system. There is no process for payments. So, we set a clear and effective system with the Government Health Insurance Ministry of Health. And so we finally, we finally signed the agreement of Minister of Health on an unified system, and this by Professor Fouad al -Nawi. actually. We start by Professor Ash Hatem al and then Ashraf Hatem, and finally Dr. Uh, uh, Fouad al -Nawi. and then we take also the cover of Dr. Mohammed Mustafa, and then retrograde payment to the centers. So the patient go directly to the first phase pilot center, six uh, centers, and then the patient will not pay anything, directly go into the primary PCR, and then retrograde payment to the centers, which propagate to all SFL centers. Patients' awareness for cardiovascular system disease and MI. So patients identify the symptom as sick. So public, we have public campaigns now. Media coverage on TV started in the orbits, on the Dream, on uh, and the CBC, and different TV and press. Media com uh, committee and also with doctor, help of Dr. Wael Abdelal, Sahakli program. Actually, we, this is very important with Dr. Amr Hassan, Dr. Wafay, Dr. A lot of cardiology well, doctors uh, uh, speak about the importance of primary PCR and Sahakli program. The patient bypass EMS service and seek advice directly from the nearest hospital how to, uh, to, to solve it. Public and media campaign after success of pilot center takes very important. And this is actually the paper of agreement with the ministers of health for all six centers. The second problem, the EMS, the arrival after call, 30 to 40 minutes, so you should decrease to 10 minutes. So launch is will set a system with ambulance service. Actually, we have a very good uh, ambulance. They have good experience after revolution, as you said, 
and we have a very good uh, uh, team, young, do young ambulance doctors and the young ambulance men, which are usually highly educated now, and I have the privilege to say that these highly educated. And this is also published in the yellow pages and the DeFi, the primary PCI hospitals. Lack of ECG, many ambulance. We started uh, a proposal, Minister of Health now, to cover 50% ambulance with 12 lead ECG, then 100%. But this is still economical and political obstacle, but I think within six months we will succeed in this. Low educational level for paramedics. We started a committee for training with the Ministry of Health, SFL members. We have a group who are training this. Uh, group of uh, paramedics which share in the Finnish uh, training program. A third obstacle with hospitals, the referrals, difficult logistics and finance. So we have detection, the committee in charge, and so we set unified protocols. Hospital not working 24 7. How to solve this unified SFL primary PCI center criteria? We have a pilot center detection committee in charge. We continue mapping production now. We are sharing, well, now. I think this year we will share more, more and more center, as one center, Dr. Magdi asked me. I think they are sharing in the registry, I think with the, with the, with the, with the detection of this, the centers with the committee in charge, I think it's as one will share in the 22% of the upper Egypt. Complicated system of referral from physicians to right hospital. We set on five, uh, systems, SFL, and this is a launch program with SFL for referral hospitals. We, we, we took a referral physicians with us to Prague uh, uh, in June 2012 with, Peter, with Dr. Peter Udiniski and Susanna. And this is a very important that you have to train the referral doctors. This, this is called primary PCI in order to refer the patients to, you, to your hospitals, and then we can send the patient again to the referral doctors. We sh and this is repeated in November 2012. We have two meetings, big meetings with the referral physicians. The physician, we continue educational programs, and these are the guidelines, they can, probably can make a contract with the European Society of Cardiology for guideline physician educations. We're launching programs to referral physicians. We're starting to set a trained SFL team. Three sessions on the cardio, big cardiology conference, cardio, cardio Alex, Cardio Egypt, working group uh, intervention, then satellite, guide, satellite guidelines meetings in eight govern, uh, governments. So the achievement in 2012, three meetings in steering committee, two meetings by region, including member allocated and task force committee, select six pilot center and develop center of excellence announced for other centers. I hope we have a lot this year. Second phase, Egyptian registry launch, we finished uh, yesterday. Upgrade Egyptian SFL websites with press conference in February 2012, June 12 and November 12, and two meetings from industry partners. And these are an examples of the, uh, what, we, what we do here in, in different uh, conference. And this is for the public awareness campaign with, with, to the Rotary, went to the clubs, went to the factory. Uh, and actually, we make that's called the cycling or the stand for life. This is after Cardio Alex in Alexandria. And this is by different doctors in the stand for life doing in, in the in Baba Institute, in the Nasser Institute, in the Gazik, in Upper Egypt, in Cairo, in Alexandria, with the, with the doctors for stand for life uh, awareness. And this is uh, by Dr. William Wojcik you know, with, uh, with us in the last Cardio Alex. And this is the press conference. And this is in Arabic, uh, stand for life for uh, patients for uh, acute myocardial infarction could be free with a special prize. And this is uh, come from Finland, it's called the Patient Awareness Campaign, SFL Mobile Clinic. And this patient, uh, we come to this clinic, we can make it in different areas in Egypt. And this is for the mobile clinics, to, for the risk factors, these, and then awareness of the primary PCI. Uh, uh, this is inside uh, the, the, the car, and they come in the, uh, free from Finland. Egyptian journey will have more. Our mission, 2013. <clears throat> We continue Egyptian mapping production, guidelines, implantation, physician educations, registry questionnaire with database collection, uh, increase SFL pilot centers, a media campaign. We can use this act now, save a life. This is from the Stand for Life uh, projects, public and patient awareness campaign, overcome EMS barriers, in educations, and motivation for centers participation, data entry, registry going to action, mainly in neglected region, and thanks to SFL executive. Uh, committee, Dr. Carlo De Mario, Peter Udinischi, Peter Kala, William Widgen, Bajadi, and Susanna. And finally, I would like to thank Your Abbott for this. Up.
Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Abbott Company, who are the main sponsor, the Sanofi, Novartis, and Pfizer, and Boston Scientific, who uh, made a lot for the Stand for Life. I'd like to thank all the, the project manager and all the ICOM team. I'd like to thank all QL with us uh, in the National Heart Institute, in Mbaba Institutes, in different universities in Alexandria, in Cairo, and Upper Egypt and Delta. I think they did a lot, and I hope we'll do a lot, because they started with six centers, but I think in the next Next year, we'll have more than 22, and uh, uh, we achieved 68% uh, at the beginning, but actually now achieving 22%. I think we succeed in spite of the all obstacles we have in these last two years, and I hope for Egypt to, to go into a, a good place in, all over the world. Thank you. So the paper is open for discussion. I think it's a very important paper because it applies uh, what has been discussed before to the uh, situation here in Egypt. If I understand well, the main problem is the emergency system, emergency medical system, the fact that the ambulances uh, do not have a unified, coordinated action. And uh, I wonder what is the action plan to, to overcome this limitation. I understand you have very good support from the Department of Health, but uh, uh, I mean, um, how to, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't think the emergency is the main obstacles here. Uh, we have a lot of facts, but it differs from different areas in Egypt. In some areas, there are a lot, a lot of emergency cars, and highly educated, like the big cities, like Cairo, Alexandria, some of the uh, Delta. So it is no problem of the emergency, and also the paramedics are well educated. And, uh, but uh, uh, I think that 60-65% of the patients are covered by governments. When you go directly to university, they go to an institute of uh, National Heart Institute, for example, they are not going, you should have a paper that this paper include, uh, uh, it's a money for this primary PCI. You don't have, you're not insured, but you should have a permission from the uh, health insurance uh, or from the Ministry of Health to have. It. So we succeeded to have this unified protocol and the agreement with the Ministry of Health for this 65% in only these areas. So the other 35% of the patients, either by the companies, so would they go to the companies to ensure, to, uh, to, aware, uh, to make awareness, and this through the Saha clip, through the going directly, uh, or through the guideline implantations with the doctors or the favorite doctors. Other, even if you have money, if you are very rich, you don't know how to go. Sometimes you can wait for your old doctor to come to have the diagnosis. This is not problem of the emergence, problem of your education. Although they are highly educated, but they are not educated to know that they have now acute infarction, you should go directly into the catheter. The third importance in Egypt that they are doing the, the, the catheter in the working hours. But now I'm changing the mind. It should work at midnight. They're doing a lot, doing a lot of cases, doing a lot of stenting, but they're working up to 8 o'clock. After 8 o'clock, usually it's stopped. But since we started the Center for Life, they changed the concept. So now every center wants to be in competition to work at midnight to be one of the stent for life projects. So I don't think the, pro the problem, I, I thought at the beginning the stent for life the emerged. But with the advent of this uh, revolution in the last two years, we have very good experience with the emergency now. They do a lot. Uh, when I went to Prague with one of the, the resp men responsible for the emergency, he made a, a lecture about the emergency and he's enthusiastic to help us. And he's, they have a, a a uh, number like 911, uh, which is an emergency for the, for the cardiac patient or non-cardiac patients. And they're doing a lot for this. So not the problem of the emergency, it's the problem financial, the problem of education, even the doctors, even the cardiologists, the cardiologists and non-cardiologists, the patients. Uh, the third, the, the cat lab availabilities within the areas. We have a lot of cat lab, for example, in Cairo, but they are not working 24-7 only up to 8 o'clock. So now we're making enthusiasm and dividing, for example, Cairo into four areas with the GPS in the emergency course. But we don't have the facility of helicopter, a lot of helicopters like uh, Qatar. Or, uh, we can make one, two helicopters, but this is for, uh, I think, VIP. It's not, it's not, I'm not planning for a helicopter. I'm planning just to go to the hospitals where you have the facility primaries because already the university, we have a lot. The, the, the importance in Egypt, we have a lot of manpower. A lot of uh, doctors can do primary PCI, but they don't have the facility to bring the patients, and they don't have 
the facility to be on midnight. So I helped them to be on midnight. I helped them that the patient will come to them and to be into uh, to one track. For example, I, uh, I think uh, Reda with us in the, uh, Mohammed with the, with the National Heart Institute, National Heart Institute, uh, is a big, big center in Egypt doing a lot of, uh, but they were not so organized, but now they are one of the biggest centers, so we're organized uh, in doing a lot, a lot of cases, uh, not from uh, belonging to the, uh, to the Ministry of Health, to so Health Insurance, not belonging to uh, coming from, uh, you know, from, from, from any, from any doctors or any patients. Sometimes, in, for example, in Alexandria, I did before primary PCI, not from the Ministry of Health. We pay for this. We pay for the patient, for the poor patients. But this is not, that should not be the rule. So now we are doing primary PCI belonging to this. So I think uh, uh, it is because in two years we succeed from eight to 22. So in spite of this, so I think we, we, we can achieve more and more. There is yeah. a question. Uh, uh, experience and experience uh, for us in the Meta Cardiology Center about uh, the gov uh, governmental issue. Uh, uh, we have a uh, cath lab and we don't do primary PCI as 24-7. Uh, uh, but um, we, uh, our rate uh, weekly is uh, more than uh, 35 cases. Uh, so we had uh, to make an arrangement with uh, the um, uh, insurance and ministry about uh, how the patient pays if it's an emergency. And uh, we realized that uh, there is nothing in the law uh, forbid this. So what we do now- For what? Uh, the patient uh, pays retrograde. Okay. Without any uh, arrangement or agreement or papers. It's, uh, For what, who are you? For the center. It was a, like a phone call. We asked uh, about the patient for emergency. Uh, oh. you, uh, you, uh, you know, in your sir, center? For the center, yeah, uh, for our center. Okay. Uh, the problem was, uh, as you said, um, the patient have to get m many agreements before he do this. Yeah. And if it's yeah. Yeah. For cases of primary PCI, that, as you said, uh, comes at the day time. Yes. You will not pay anything. Then uh, they uh, go into the hospital. Uh, the admission is made under uh, emergency title, mm. and he does uh, primary PCI stent uh, oh. deployment, everything. Then uh, retrogradely, he, the, if it's, it's uh, insurance or ministry, oh. we arrange this to be retrograde. Yeah. Without any agreement, yeah. official, officially. No, no, there is agreement, official agreement. We, we did this uh, two, you, two years ago. No, your center is not included in Center for Life program. And I know, I know okay. this. And I'm asking about uh, if, if this is uh, possible, uh, then uh, it's, it, it could be uh, made as a national. Uh, I'm not talking about primary PCI uh, especially. For any cases, uh, emergency, uh, like if, uh, unstable angina or MI, fibromatic uh, rescue PCI, he will need uh, urgent. Sometimes they say uh, it's Thursday and Friday and Saturday come on Sunday. No, no, it's, uh, it's not the project. You have to concentrate on one, one track. It's your track is a project of Stand for Life is only primary PCR for ST elevation in force. It's not for unstable. Okay. Even in, in UK, even in France, even in Italy, it is ST. The project concentrated in one track. If you're going to speak in the others, this is not about this is out of the projects, transferring mice out of the projects, uh, unstable angina is out of projects. We have to concentrate on this. Now, we have ST elevation. Your center, for example, it is ST elevation in Farshan. You should work 24-7, not up to 8 o'clock. If you're not 24-7, you are not eligible to have. You should have more than two doctors, can do 75 cases per year and should have 400 cases of the center, 400 cases per year, 400 cases PCI, uh, and every operator 75, two technicians uh, at least. For the, uh, one center, surgery, primary uh, cabbage, uh, surgeon, cardiac surgery, stand, uh, stand on surgery, uh, uh, we, we are not, this is not uh, uh, important to, to have it in, uh, in, in the, if, our criteria. If, 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 if these criteria are fulfilled, we, we, we should, uh, Ask to be involved in the program at any time, or it's something you should go into the registry first. I told you before, you should go into the registry first 
to prove that you have included the patients. Patient example, they will say the European registry which have. We will start the third uh, phase of registry within two months. And then after you go into registry, we, we have the committee going to your center. And then you, this in the, inside this center, they make an external auditing of how many you have, what are the results, and then you take the agreement. After this, we include your center and the SFL uh, centers to send it to the Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health will not accept except through the SFL committee, which are depending on this criteria. Anyway. I understand that the program is for the benefit of the people in general. Yes. So have you considered... No, that's working fine. Mm. Uh, have you considered getting private hospitals up as part of the network? Yes. And is that functioning? Uh, yes, it's private hospital going into the protocol, but this is not be, this is belong, not belonging to the Ministry of Health. The private hospitals are included in the... In the, the registry is not only for the universities and not only for the institutes. Even the private hospitals, if they have doctors, qualified doctors, they are included in the registry, in first phase and second phase. But I'm speaking about, uh, because the private is private, I'm not responsible for the private to how to deal with the patients. It's, it is, this center is, uh, have a unified protocol accepted for Stand for Life. We have uh, two centers uh, for the private hospitals uh, which are fulfilling this criteria. Although we have a lot of private, but not include the registry, I'm not justified to say that this center is uh, feasible to do primary or not. I'm not allowed, but if you go into registry, I'm going to say that this center is eligible to be a private center for Stand for Life. Other projects, but I'm speaking about also, which is 65% of our patients, which are poor, which are usually insured, because we don't have actually good private insurance in Egypt. It's not like uh, uh, UK or uh, France, they have a private insurance and all the patients are insured all over the country. They can go anywhere. We don't have this till now, we don't have it properly. They, they thought that they will start to do it, but till they started, I make it just in retrograde payments. So I have, make, have to make the effort to convince the minister that this could be a, a, a actual, uh, but for the private action, yes, you're right. You and Professor De Mario. Now, I cannot. My second question is both to you and Professor De Mario. I do not fully understand. I appreciate the rationale behind having 24 7 service. But if you look at the UK model, uh, I'm well aware that there are centers that are working from eight to five uh, in the current day. And over the past five, six years, the majority of centers that came into service started with an eight to five uh, platform or service pattern and gradually evolved into a 24 seven. And from your slides, we've seen the fantastic uh, progress done in the UK over the past six, seven years. So why is it absolutely imperative that centers from the outset uh, be registered only if they offer 24-7 service? Uh, you can answer. Yeah, you are perfectly right that uh, still uh, uh, there are, in, in this sort of initial phase of implementation in the UK, uh, centers that are uh, office hours, uh, um, PCI, most of the times is not really 8 to 5, is more 8 to 8, so day angioplasty, primary angioplasty. This is not uh, what uh, the network uh, uh, coordinators, however, recommend, uh, and uh, is also against what is uh, the recommendation of the um, emergency system. The ambulance service said is a very complex for us uh, to know where to bring a patient uh, if there is this sort of uh, office hours uh, type of work. Uh, this uh, works for the time being in, in an interim phase, but it's a little bit like hospitals doing less than 400 cases per year. Theoretically, they are illegal. It's, not, uh, it's, a, it's against the rules of the, uh, uh, that, that has been set up by the British Cardiac Intervention Society. You are allowed to do that only in the first three years of your activity. What will happen, as you know, there is a lot of <laughs> negotiation, <laughs> and I'm not so sure that they will be stopped uh, and decommissioned uh, in, in the uh, foreseeable future, especially since we are still in a phase of expansion. Having said that, I think the most logical 
economically and also in terms of uh, patient results uh, is uh, to have uh, uh, services merging. And the way to do is operators going into one hospital to work together rather than having thousands of hospitals, especially in the big cities. No, I, I have the, another uh, type of answer. Uh, first, if you go to the Ministry of Health and then say that I'm working, sorry, up to 8 o'clock, and then after 8 o'clock, if the patient come, I don't want to have this service. If this patient, after four hours of chest pain, first medical contact, are you going to give streptokinase? It's okay, give streptokinase. So if the patient has the risk of PCR, what you're going to do? You have to come. So already you should have this in emergency. Don't say that I'm working to 8 o'clock, I don't have this. So you not be eligible to, to have the succeed of the project. And the second, that if, if, if in the morning, what, what you are going to do for this patient, if you come out for uh, f four hours, five hours after uh, first medical contact. Okay, so for the project to succeed, you should have a criteria, and then you have it to increase it day by day. If you you have six, but you are not working up to eight, this is your fault. This is not our fault. The projects uh, six, you can stand. If you have two, it's not allowed because two is not enough. One and be abroad, for example, in conference. One is not enough. It's not not should be more than two in the center. And everyone is skilled, as Dr. Anton said, that uh, you should skilled skilled operators because. In order to be a primary PCR operator, you should be doing more primary PCR. If you allowed to have PCI, I, I remember when I started to do PCI, uh, I was in Switzerland, they said that uh, you should have more than 500 diagnostic catheters to start doing PCI. Now, uh, the fellows, when you start uh, 550 uh, 50 cases of diagnosis, say that I'm ready now to do primary PCI. This is not. Because if you have fold, if you have a complex anatomy, you have a complication, you have to treat the complication. If when you see no reflow once in your time and you don't have the capability to treat no reflow and the patient will die, I think you should blame yourself. So you should be experienced in doing a lot of cases, uh, assist in different cases in order to have uh, good results for your center. Because the quality of the center, I think is important. I remember I remember your slide, I like it. The, for the 90 minutes, 60 minutes, that's why the definition of first medical contact is variable. I think it's made for the quality, because you should have a number, the quality. This is very important, the statement in your slide about the quality. The number is depending, uh, is done to have the, improve the quality of your center. Am I right? I think we allow a final question. So patient, poor patient uh, will be die because no facility to admit for private hospital. Uh, so stand for life for rich people, not poor people. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. our point, please. I have to answer one by one. Uh, stand for life is not for the uh, rich people. No, no, big. No, it's, it's for all. Uh, it's for all the rich. It's not only for money. Sometimes if you have money, I said, you are not educated enough to go to a center doing primary PCI. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, mistaken as indigestion, uh, maybe mistaken as uh, abdominal discomfort of, of maybe Tet syndrome, something like that. So you should ask either the emergency, the, the American College of Cardiology said that if the patient relieved by a nitroglycerin, call 911 emergency. This is an emergency case. This is for the guidelines. So uh, first of all, it's not for the, for the money. It is for education, for, for uh, arrangement of a house, making what's known as infrastructure arrangement. Regarding the poor, I found a solution for the poor. For the rich, also I found a solution for the rich. If they go to, they can go to the university, not only rich people going to the private hospital. Sometimes you can go to, uh, for example, in Alexandria, I have already a center of for the poor, for the private. You can go to the university where there are a lot of doctors available for the National Heart Institute. They have also the same. So that's not for the rich and for the poor. The second. At that point, we need to make a program for health education, health education through media, through newspaper, through radio, about signs, symptoms of uh, primary patient with chest pain, uh, uh, and especially for young people, about uh, risk factors, smoking, uh, about diet, about uh, medication. Uh, until now, I don't have any program for this. 
انت بتشوف التلفزيون انت بتشوف اسوان ها اذا هي دازنت هاف تايم تو لوك تو ذا تي في تو ويكس اجو وي هاف ان ذا اوربت تو اورز اند وي هاف ان سي بي سي وي هاف ان دريم اند وي هاف ا صحه كليب وذ دكتور وائل دكتور وائل از ريسبونس فور ذا فور ذا ميديا كامبين دكتور عمرو حسان ديد ذس اند ماي سيلف دكتور وفائي اند دكتور اشرف تو كان دكتور وائل ابي ريسبونس فور ذا ميديا Responsible for the media, Mohammed. It's just Saha Clip is an online uh, uh, awareness uh, uh, campaign. campaign for different health uh, reasons. So it's uh, if, if you're not online, you're not going to. We're just okay. looking that a lot of young people are online now on their iPad, on their mobile, on whatever it is. So it is an initiative, a start initiative to. create awareness for different diseases, hepatitis C, whatever. And we, uh, we are cooperating with Center of Life to deliver this uh, message uh, online. And I have the answer of this. When I started the project, I suppose like you, that to start to make the awareness uh, at the beginning. Uh, now, uh, every patient have uh, acute infarction should go to the hospital, do primary PCR. But I take the advice of Dr. Carlo and Dr. William. They said that we have experience. That's why the importance to have uh, experience in different countries. Uh, they said that if you don't prepare your infrastructure, don't be disastrous if the patient come to the hospital didn't find the doctor. So first of all, we found our problems. All of us sat together, I said, eight groups. We stayed for six hours for two days, six hours, six hours. And then we found the solution the same. The, the problem the same. A solution the same, that we don't have only the problem of the money, we don't have only the problem of the patient for the awareness, we have uh, all problems, but in grades. For example, in Alexandria, maybe a problem differs from Delta, from Aswan differs from Asyut. Asyut only, they have only one university hospitals. You have three doctors in the hospitals. You know, the, the, the mayor is a cardiologist, but they couldn't help me till now. So also the Asyut, make it Asyut. So it's difficult. So we have to go into a into city and prepare what's regarding the media campaign. Now we're starting to do the media campaign in the last six months. If you look to the YouTube, the different TVs, for example, we give you the program to the different parts of the TV, newsletters, a lot of newsletters. We go to the different factors, uh, different uh, clubs and different rotaries because the rich and poor, So we do. We go to a different part, but you should say that that because the, uh, the question, the first questions, where to go. I said, okay, we can go to this place, but up to eight o'clock. No, it's difficult to say this. You say that this is the first phase, and then the second phase, and so on.